A warm welcome to all our viewers, to our series Natural Medicine. Today we have chosen the subject of polyarthritis. On the one hand, because I don't even know what the word poly means in the front. I'm a bit familiar with arthritis, but not with poly. And on the other hand, because I have a proven expert here in the studio, who cares about exactly these polyarthritis problems, which he has accompanied for 30 or 40 years and offers very successful solutions. This is our topic today and we're going to get started right now. Stay tuned, it's about to start. And here we are again. And now I may show and introduce you to my guest. It is none other than Professor Dr. Thomas Rao. Welcome, dear Thomas. Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you so much for letting me talk about the subject of my heart, polyarthritis. Originally I was mainly trained in rheumatology. Well, I do biological medicine, but this biological medicine is based on really good academic medical knowledge. And I've been trained as a rheumatologic internist. That was my education. Well, that was many years ago, and it is still as relevant as it was then. On the contrary, rheumatoid arthritis, as this disease is called today, or chronic polyarthritis, has become more common. It starts earlier than 40 years ago, where I was still allowed to learn it in the university hospitals. It changed its face. It has become much more persistent. It's an autoimmune condition which actually affects the whole person. So thritis is inflammation, right? Yes, itis. So Arthur means the joint. Itis means the inflammatory joint disease. Arthrosis is the degenerative wear and tear disease of the joint. And the arthritis. And poly means at many places. That means nothing but a lot, poly means a lot. So if the joint hurts, the knee joint and so on, then it's polyarthritis. Exactly. And the typical thing, there are different forms. Academic medicine is then becoming ever broader. There is rheumatoid polyarthritis, synovial arthritis, colitis arthritis and so on. But it's always the same. It expresses itself differently. For example, psoriatic arthritis expresses itself a bit differently, namely first in the small joints, then in the large, and the polyarthritis is reversed. But these are details. Academic medicine makes a lot of subsplits, which is completely nonsensical. This only comes from the hopelessness of its therapy failures, that it just keeps getting bogged down. No, it's about the following. The synovial membranes are recognized as foreign. Why? Yes, exactly. Why? Because, and then there is an autoimmune, auto means against itself, immune disease. And polyarthritis is a classic autoimmune disease. To put it in brackets, autoimmune diseases are becoming massively more common. And in a fast-paced topic, I might get to that later. That means I'm allergic to myself? Yes. It's actually crazy. That sounds a bit psychologized. I'm becoming allergic to myself. No, there is an antibody effect or reaction against a part of my body. Namely the synovial membrane and secondarily the cartilage. And there is inflammation locally and the joint swells. This can then be in the small joints, very typical with the morning stiffness. This develops overnight and in the morning the hands are stiff. And in the past the patients, there are significantly more women than men, had the deformity and these deformed hands, which, thank God, no longer exists today because there is medication that can be used against it. Yes, 
so this deforming polyarthritis is already less common. I saw that very, very often when I was still a young doctor. Well, it's an autoimmune disease. Now comes the question, and unfortunately that is not asked in academic medicine. Well, why? It says, well, there is no known cause. There is no known cause for polyarthritis, because there is not one cause, but an individual mix of causes. A multitude of burdens, of causes that work together in such a way they add up with this person, that this multi-cause gives this autoimmune reaction. I'll explain that with something else. There is another autoimmune disease. This is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Academic medicine has such interesting titles and names. The patient has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is an autoimmune thyroid disease. I'll explain it now. The thyroid is the organ with the most blood flow per gram of tissue. Or almost the organ with the strongest blood supply. A small organ with an insanely high blood supply. And also permeated lymphatically by the lymph. The lymph comes from the tooth area, flows down the throat and also flows through the thyroid gland. Over time, the toxins from the mouth become toxic to the thyroid. At some point the T-lymphocytes, the immune cells, note, what are those strange cells? We have to do something there. We have to do something and form antibodies against the thyroid tissue which is impregnated with, for example, mercury or through dental toxins and so on. So then comes an immune reaction against that organ. Hashimoto, academic medicine called it. Then it's done. But no one looks at why. Exactly the same with polyarthritis. It's just that the process is much longer, it's years of development, which will then at some point be triggered again by this or that. Because I had this training, a large number of rheumatic patients still come to me. These are polyarthritis patients. They say I had angina and then the polyarthritis came. No, that was just the trigger. The angina certainly didn't trigger it. No, it didn't cause it, it was only the trigger. The famous last straw. The last straw. And then it won't be good anymore. It then came into the process. That's the big problem. There are a multitude of reasons behind this. We always find it almost embarrassing. I always say the same thing. We always find toxic loads. Toxic bacterial waste that's still there from the most pointless antibiotic treatment or viral loads. There is even meanwhile known from academic medicine that there are certain viruses, such as polio viruses or RNA viruses, which can cause arthritis. It's also very interesting. I know, I can hardly say that that I am now getting a real boost from polyarthritis patients again, who have had the vaccination. This is an RNA component that is given to humans. And that can at best, it has not yet been statistically proven, but it is evident because there are so many that this can trigger polyarthritis in these patients who are already at risk. Again the last straw. 
The last straw. It's really dramatic what's going on at the moment. But that basically means that you should treat a thyroid problem or polyarthritis with a doctor who thinks holistically, so they can treat it successfully. In the Sonnenberg Clinic in Schwelbrunn, Canton Appenzell, Switzerland, where I am now, we have a lot of autoimmune patients, colitis patients, Crohn's patients, thyroid patients, Hashimoto. MS has become very common, MS, multiple sclerosis, the autoimmune process takes place in the nerve sheaths. Or like today's topic, arthritis. Then the suffering, the immune process, takes place on the synovial membranes. It's always about the mucous membranes. It's not the cartilage. The cartilage degenerates, being simply digested through the inflammatory process. And that's why the joints in polyarthritis patients destroy themselves. But the problem lies in the synovial membranes. That's where you have to start. I once learned that the body never does anything nonsensical. And when it does that reaction and goes for the joint, that sounds like a very nonsensical reaction. Are these toxins around the joint that are trying to dissolve the inflammatory processes? Exactly, yes. So again a reasonable reaction. I am deeply convinced as a believer that there are only reasonable reactions in the body. You have to see it that way. The rationale of this autoimmune response is, I think, to flush out toxic substances through increased mucous membrane production, through increased metabolism. It's just stupid that it's in the compact system of the joint. These substances then remain activated for a very long time and cause inflammation and can then secondarily destroy the cartilage. But the rationale for the reaction lies in the fact that toxic substances, and they are often organic toxic substances, not inorganically toxic substances that cause arthritis. That's why we also have this frequent connection between teeth where there is inflammation, root canal treatment, which were foolishly made, these root canals kill the tooth. And then bacterial toxins are produced, which are flushed out into the body via the lymphatic system. We see quite often that with infected, root-treated teeth, the patient does not notice whether they have an infection on the dead tooth or not, because it is dead and dead no longer has any sensitivity. That's why it's doing this reaction. And those bacteria toxins, those corpse toxins which are then transported somewhere via the lymph, be it to the thyroid gland, be it to the lungs, then there is pulmonary fibrosis, which can be an effect, for example, or arthritis. We always treat people the same way, namely locally, as a matter of course. We have ways of specifically binding these toxins. Or we protect the cartilage, so to speak, by, this is a development that we have made, the platelet release growth factors, PRGF treatment, we extract substances from the blood, so from the thrombocytes, and inject them into the joint. Stem cells? 
Those aren't stem cells, that's another therapy that unfortunately isn't allowed in Switzerland or the EU. But the platelet segregation, this platelet thrombocyte concentration method, we can use it to protect and even rebuild cartilage. So we do a detox, we do an anti-inflammatory process, and we detoxify the body as a whole. As always, that's the most important thing. I always say the same thing. We're back to the gut because the human body's most powerful detoxifier is the gut. And this intestine and the intestinal bacteria bind these joint toxins, of course in very small quantities, and it takes a very long time, but slowly, like a sponge, these toxins that unfortunately accumulate in the body, in these patients, into which joints have concentrated, can be sucked out again. So to speak. So these are our methods. My heart jumps when I get to treat such a poor patient because unfortunately, academic medicine is only treating with anti-inflammatory drugs. And at some point they say, now the joint is broken, now we have to put in a new joint. It's such mechanistic thinking. So it's ultimately a result for anyone who only works on the symptomatic level, that the joint will eventually need to be replaced. Far too many joints are being replaced today anyway, because the real, causal therapy is not being done. But the reality is that these joints are being damaged by chronic inflammation, like cartilage being burned, so to speak, getting weaker and inferior. And at some point the arthritis, the inflammation, turns into arthrosis, into destruction of the joint. That's why these poor patients used to have these terrible hands or bent knees and very severe pain. It's unimaginable. That is no longer necessary today. But dear patients, come early to the holistic doctor who knows these connections. Don't just treat your joints with anti-inflammatory drugs. That doesn't do it in the long run. I'm just imagining what kind of pain it is when you imagine what they have to endure. Ultimately, they also have to take painkillers, otherwise they die. That's not possible. The following is interesting. These people come of course, when do you go to see Dr. Rao? If nothing else helped. When there's a fire, when the fire brigade has to come. So I get a lot of bad cases that are already advanced. I can't tell them, I can't tell these poor, really hurting people, now you have to stop with your anti-inflammatory drugs. Unfortunately, this is not possible. But continue to take these remedies, they work very well, that's true. But they don't work on the cause. And we treat the cause at the same time. Typically, within six weeks, patients are so much better on our therapies that they can decrease the medication. And within a few months, the majority of people with polyarthritis are on very little or even no chemical medication. But of course it takes a while. Do you know how many millions of people we have in the German-speaking area alone, who suffer from it and how few are treated causally? Exactly. I don't want to have it in front of my eyes, it's so bad. What I wanted to say, in between, when you talked about teeth, I thought to myself, when was the last time I heard that? Or the first time I heard that you can only go to Dr. Rao if you are willing to have your mouth looked at. That was 25, 30 years ago, I think I heard that before. No treatment without examining your mouth. 
it's a reputation that has preceded you, up to me. That's right, isn't it? It used to be said that you can only go to Rao if you restore your teeth. If it now at least means you only have to have someone look at your mouth, that's still okay. And why? I would still like to explain that. Because in the many arthritis patients, in the many autoimmune patients, we have seen that one of the most common causes, the most common is the toxins, heavy metals, and other toxins, the second most common cause is dental disease. And that's why I look at it. And if I have a cancer patient or an autoimmune patient, or a polyarthritis patient and she still has her mouth full of amalgam, or even root-treated teeth, then I have to advise here, we'll do a panoramic x-ray. And today I can look, I can prove, in a laboratory, whether this focus is relevant, significant. That has changed. I can do Ranti's tests, I can do heavy metals tests, I can do LTT tests. These are the tests where I can say you, dear patient, have to remove this tooth because it is partly causing your illness. It's not like it used to be, everyone has to restore their teeth. No, today we are much, much, much more differentiated. There are hardly any, so our biological medicine is extremely advanced, extremely advanced in the last 20 years. Come to our clinic in Schwelbrunn, in the beautiful Appenzellerland, Sonnenberg Clinic, because you are clarified. We can clarify everything. And yet it is still the case that these herds of teeth are not looked at as possible causal links to polyarthritis in a normal practice, right? Exactly. That's actually sad. That's really bad. The dentist can do whatever they want up here. It never affects the body. Yes, unfortunately the classes are divided too, apart from the first year, where the two classes are together. Afterwards, the dentist develops like this and the medical doctor develops like this. Unfortunately, these are not the same university courses. And unfortunately, there is far too little awareness. Really, there is some catching up to do. I have one last question when you talked about the knee, that you can also detoxify locally on the knee. So I was just thinking, how do you do that? How can you do a local detox? I only know about chelation drainage or an iron euphoresis at best, but I don't know anything else. There are different methods. You can do that with a rinse. Or what we do is punctures with agents that can have an anti-inflammatory or even cartilage building effect. That's how we do it. So procaine, for example, against inflammation? Unfortunately, procaine is far too short-acting. But as I said, the very best with absolutely amazing results, so people who were told now they really have to put in a new knee joint, that's such mechanistic thinking, which after some of these treatments, of course it takes some, were able to walk again largely without any problems. We have an orthopedist in our team who has done over 2,000 surgeries, who says today that 80% of joint surgeries are not necessary and can be avoided. Even if it's quite advanced. And we're doing these therapies now, we're doing them at the clinic. And I have to say, especially with the big joints, the results are amazing. On the one hand there are the degrading processes that cause pain. And we can counteract them by injecting restorative remedies, but also throughout the body. And so we gain time for detoxification. And once the cause has been eliminated, the condition persists. 
and then the body no longer has to act against itself. Exactly. But it dissolves. Absolutely. Thomas, another valuable show for a lot of viewers. Thank you for bringing this closer to us. On the one hand I am sad that very few people have the chance to get to know a holistic approach. And there you are asked again, dear viewers, what more can we do than present a different perspective on things here? Ultimately, the program must spread widely so that the people affected at least have the chance to hear another way of looking at things. And then they can discuss with their doctor what they think. Or they also have the free choice to decide which therapy path they want to go. Which of the approaches is more logical for them? I can only say that I am happy for every person who has come out of this veil of tears, out of this pain, and is healthy again. And I would wish even more that everyone would have the chance to find a path to health without this cascade of pain continuing to an operation, an artificial joint. So please feel free to spread this basic knowledge that we heard today. And again sincere thanks, dear Professor Dr. Thomas Rao. Thank you for spreading this. Thank you. And the best of health to you too, see you next time.